Now, the past paper questions. These look massive. These look quite huge, but they're not that bad and they're not that difficult to comprehend. As soon as you see a diagram like this, you know what you're going to be talking about. And in this case, we're talking about a three level indexed sequential file system. Now, this one in particular stores things in the range 0000 to 9999. There are only a few key possible key values that have currently been allocated to customers. And what the question is asking is explain how new customer records 3892 and 3893 are to be added to the system. Mention the creation and linking of any necessary index or data blocks. That's five marks. That's a quite a reasonably big question. So what are we doing here? Well, we're getting a mark for each of the five actions. The first thing is that it creates a second level index block with entries from 3000 to 3900. Link to the pointer from 3000 in the first level index block to the start of this block. So this is that second level that has a bit more detail. We then go to the second point that says, we need then to create a third level index block with the entries from 3800 to 3890. And we link the pointer from 3800 in the second level block to the start of this block. So just as we saw in the diagrams I set up, we're now pointing at the actual value essentially. Then third point, create a data block for records 3890 to 3899. We're then gonna store the two records in sequential order in that data block because they follow each other on. And then finally, link the pointer from 3890 in the third level index to the start of the data block on disk. This gives you full access to the ability to save that data. How about part B then? Explain how the computer would access records 3893 at a later date. So you're essentially talking through a similar thing. It's three marks, it's significantly less than the previous one, but we're looking at beginning at the first level index. We follow the pointer from 3000 to the second level index block. Another mark for following the pointer from 3800 to the third level index block. So this is actually reasonably straightforward. We're talking about how we find it, how we follow those arrows. And the third mark is following the pointer from 3890 to the data block on disk and then loading the required data block. Now the accept is quite interesting here because they'll also accept following the pointer from 3890 to the data block on disk, locate and load the required record 3893. So they've been a bit more flexible with this final point, but I think it's reasonably straightforward. As long as you understand what's happening, that the first level is linking to the second level, which gives more detail, and then linking to the third level, which gives a lot more detail and starts you off at the actual physical location on disk, then we know exactly what's going on here. Another past paper question that's absolutely huge. Let's break that down to the, into part A and part B for a start. So question two here, a programmer chooses to use a random access file system with separate overflow areas to store records. Explain what's meant by an overflow area. So just two marks here for mentioning what that overflow area is about. The mark scheme is reasonably straightforward in regard to this as well. We get a mark for saying it's a separate file and a mark for saying it uses serial storage. There's no more points that can be taken there because there's not a lot more to say about it really. Part two, where another programmer recommends using the following progressive overflow strategy and they they want us to use, if the memory location calculate for storing a record is already occupied, the record is stored within the main file and the next available empty location in the sequence. If the end of the main file is reached when searching for an available location, the search continues from the beginning of the main file. That's exactly what we built in the algorithm in the activity section. Give one advantage and one disadvantage using this progressive overflow strategy compared with a separate overflow area. So advantages is a couple of them. First one are the records are likely to be stored at or close to the calculated location, so the access will be faster. If a record's not in the file, this will be known as soon as the first empty location is reached and less total storage space is needed. There is only one disadvantage to this though. The main file has a fixed maximum capacity, so storage of further records might be prevented as we add to that. I think you can see there from the amount of advantages though that this is a much preferable strategy to just dumping any collision data straight in the overflow file. Okay, let's scrub to part B. Part B looks massive, but essentially we've got a big load of information there about a hashing algorithm and we're going to be able to talk about it and calculate it. So the hashing method is taking the alphabet sequence number of each letter and add them together. Add the day number, add the year number and calculate the memory location using the hash function total mod 1000. And that's because there are a thousand memory locations. So it's a bit of an arbitrary function, but 
it is nonetheless. There's an example then of how that's going to actually work, where you've got A is 1. So again, this is very similar to the hashing algorithm that we built earlier on. Let's start with part I. The largest number generated by this hash and hashing menu is given by NOV3099. Let's work it out. So we take each letter individually, we add those values up, we then do mod 1000, and we end up with 180. That's just following a method, following that example. Reasonably straightforward, I hope. Part B, explain why these, this would be unsuitable. Well, it's going to be unsuitable because all the records are going to be grouped near the start of the file. So collisions are going to be really, really frequent on this. So it would slow down the execution of the file. Part three, suggest an improved hashing method for storing records with key fields in the same format. So there's a bunch of things you could say here. Uh, there's a list here. So two marks for a suitable hash method. So you, you just describe a different hash method, which incorporates the month, day, and year figures and can generate a hash value over most of the range. So what you're hoping is that we maybe add a multiplier or something to the letters so that the addition always goes over a thousand. And if it always goes over a thousand, the chances of it being more evenly allocated are higher. The second bullet point they say there is it'll avoid collisions between records for similar dates in successive years. So you don't want March 02818 and March 0119 to collide. So again, a multiplying factor, something like that will work wonders there. And it should produce a number in excess of a thousand by using powers or multiples of the day, month, and year values, then apply them to the hash value. So essentially, if you just change this function so that instead of just adding the day and the year, if you multiplied by the day and the year, the multiplications there would be enough to put a bit of space between the values that we're trying to put into the hash table. And that would be a much more successful algorithm. Final past paper question that we're going to look at is one of the more difficult ones to answer because it's a single sentence with six marks. I personally always feel that if a question fills up the page with writing and there's a number of parts to it, it's a bit easier to attack than a single question worth a big chunk of marks. Nonetheless, let's have a look at a strategy for it. Explain the use of multi-level indexes and draw a diagram to demonstrate the operation of a three-level index. So it's very, very similar to that first past paper question we were looking at, but we're doing the opposite this time. We're drawing a diagram and explaining it. Well, let's just start with th a few simple things that we could use to explain it. This is the guidance of the mark scheme. We're going to have a mark for each point, uh, a mark for showing three tables in the diagram, and a mark for showing the indexes. So you can see that what we're doing here is spreading the, the marks over a variety of different things. So if your diagram's on point, you're most of the way there. Let's have a look at the first explanations we could have, though. So we need to mention that an, in, an index is used to improve the read access times. I think that's pretty straightforward, isn't it? But you must remind the examiner of that. The second point is there's a main that contains the location of the next index. So we've got pointers pointing to the next index. And the final is the process may extend to several levels. Now, a three-level index, the last one, the last index contains the physical address of the record. And again, reasonably straightforward. We've talked about this a few times. Here's the diagram. We have three tables. The index location is pointing to the next level of the table until the last one where it's pointing to the physical location on disk. Those past paper questions are very, very similar in tone. There's a lot of moving around these simple ideas and making sure you can express them as eloquently as possible. By far the best revision strategy for these questions is to get used to using the wording in the mark scheme in your answers.